Do you want to know how to discipline an autistic child for hitting? I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, how to build strong family bonds and child development, all through the lens of the principal self-government. And in this video, we're talking about autistic children who hit. In this video, we're going to talk about autism and hitting just a little bit so we can understand the scope there in the landscape. And we're going to understand when to expect hitting and what to do about it. Is it okay if autistic children hit more than other children? Do we tolerate that? Do we not? What do we teach them? That's what this video is all about. I do have experience with children with ASD. I was a therapeutic treatment care parent for troubled teens for many years. So I raised four children of my own. None of them were autistic, but I did have autistic children who came to live with me in my treatment facility, which was my home. So as a therapeutic treatment care parent, it was my job to help them understand their processing, to understand what was going on inside their heads and see if they could learn to self-regulate that. Now I know that with ASD that's easier said than done, but it absolutely is possible. In fact, after working with all of these youth who were neurodiverse, who had trauma in their backgrounds, who had some pretty severe habits and were even some of them a danger to other people, people saw success. They saw these youth change drastically and started asking me if I would speak places, write books, be on television programs and news programs, things like that, just because people did not know it was possible to do what I did with these children. And I was able to teach them self-control without being intimidating, fearful, and without power struggling with them. That was something else that was pretty amazing. Now I know oftentimes ASD or autistic children can be pretty intense. Their anxiety levels can be high. They can have a hard time with change. They can have a hard time with self-regulation. There are a lot of things that they could be dealing with. And of course the spectrum is so broad that they could fall anywhere on this spectrum. But no matter where on the spectrum they are, no matter if you're using medication, not using medication, no matter if there are other issues at play, learning the skills and principles of self-government is actually a match for everyone. Yes, everyone, even autistic children. Sure, the learning curve might be a little steeper if your child is severely autistic, but they actually still work. The skills and principles of self-government are universal, can be used by small children who have hardly any cognitive function abilities, and even by adults. So the whole range, and this is because these skills are things that every person just needs to learn to be normal functioning person. Now, with my children who are autistic, was it more difficult to teach them self-government? Yes. They had habits. Their brains have like pathways that are really well worn that as soon as something happens, they trigger easily to go to that emotional place or that fight or flight place. They start to fight. They start to panic. They start to stress. This is very common for autistic children. And when autistic children hit other people, that's often because they have this fast track to that part of the brain where they get into this fight or flight mode and they don't know how to handle their problem. Autistic children have a tendency to move around a lot more. Hitting can happen accidentally, you know, because there's arm flapping and pacing and waving and stuff that can occur with autism. Those types of things, I'm not going to correct. I'm going to consider those pretty normal and I'm going to help my child slowly understand, okay, socially, this will be perceived this way. So let's keep working on it. So I'm going to address it, but not in a way that's like, that's a problem behavior. But when they are mad and they just start hitting me or hitting someone else or hitting furniture or walls or things like that, then guess what? We have to fix it. Is that a behavior that is going to help them solve their problems in their life? No. Is that a behavior that's going to help them with their relationships? 
No. So I would be a very bad parent if I allowed those things just to happen and gave them an excuse and said, well, they're autistic. So that's how it goes. What I'm really saying there is I'm kind of tired. I don't know if I want to deal with that right now. And maybe I even don't know how to deal with that. And so I think I'm just going to not deal with it because they are more intense in their behaviors than other people. But we can't give up on our autistic children. They need us to train them autism or not, they need training on their own self-government too. So there are four basic skills of self-government that you can start teaching children when they are very, very young and they apply even if the children are teens, they actually apply even to adults. But I do have some children's books that makes the teaching even more helpful for children. I've written 11 books over the years. At this point, there's actually some other books in the works right now, so there's gonna be more to come. Four of those books are for children. These four books teach children about the four basic skills of self-government. The four basic skills of self-government are following instructions, and then this book teaches accepting no answers and criticism. This book teaches accepting consequences, and this book teaches disagreeing appropriately. I probably should have told you the names, um, but you can find them on my website, teachingselfgovernment.com. You can get them as a package, which you'd probably want, or you can buy them individually. If you learn all the lessons in these books, that takes care of 99% of the behavioral problems. This is the proactive teaching that happens ahead of time for your child. Autistic or not, these skills need to be learned. You teach these skills to your autistic child. Are they going to struggle overcoming bad habits and learning these skills? Yes, it's going to happen expect it, anticipate it, but still teach the skills. So once you teach a child how to accept a no answer, for instance, so accepting a no answer is really difficult for autistic children usually because their anxiety levels go up if they can't maintain control, if they can't follow through with their plan, you know, those types of things, it increases their anxiety levels. So, the steps to accepting no answer that are going to be helpful for them are look at the situation or the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay, or ask to disagree appropriately. That takes a little bit more patience and pulling back and planning, but they can still do it. And then drop the subject. So that means that they have to tell their brains, don't think about that anymore. Don't ruminate on that. And that's going to be hard. It takes practice, especially when they have these well-worn pathways that they seem to just get stuck sometimes in those anxieties and in those big, big emotions that they're experiencing. So you would pre-teach a skill like accepting no answers or accepting criticism because that's all the same skill. And then when it's time for a no answer, I would pre-teach the child about that no answer and then I would help them prepare. So how does this relate to when my autistic child is hitting? Well, they're hitting because they're frustrated or they're hitting because they're trying to have control or they're hitting because they have a fast track to the brain. They're hitting because they don't have the words. They don't have the script. They don't have the formula to follow. And so this creates a feeling of being lost. This is why they end up going to their emotion, which is that oldest part of the brain. So when your autistic child is hitting another person, basically what they're doing is they're crossing over a boundary line. They are not honoring a no answer. Anytime that there is a boundary line there, that is considered a no answer. If I cross over it, that means I didn't drop the subject. If mom told me, oh, that's a no answer. We do not cross over that line and hit other people. If you cross over that line, that means you're not dropping the subject on this. You need to remember not to cross over that line. Now, are they going to mess up? Yes, especially at first but you just correct them for not dropping the subject. So you do a simple correction. Now there are seven steps to a correction that I teach in my TSG parenting course, which you can find at teachingselfgovernment.com. So you describe the situation, give a rationale for what, why it wasn't a good choice. Then you describe the proper way to have handled the situation. You tell them what they've earned for that. Then you praise them for accepting the consequence because they're going to know the skill for how to accept consequences. That's another one of our four basic skills, right? Then you do some practice. You role play practice things the right way and you praise them through those practices. Then they go and accept their consequence, come and report back to you, and then you praise them again. So you're going to be praising them like five times during that whole corrective process. So you need to have those steps down as you are teaching your child 
how to not hit. Now let's say the child is still going out of control. You try to do a correction, but clearly they are just going like total back brain. There's no stopping them. They went on that rocket train back to the back and you're like, you know what? We need to skip a correction because they're just completely out of control. Then there's an intensive teaching skill that we use called the rule of three. Now the rule of three is used differently depending on the age of the child. Also when a child is younger, so let's say your autistic child is, you know, maybe under age like six or something like that. We use a calm down spot and then a regular correction after that to help them get to a place of self-regulation. We don't ever do any teaching or accepting of consequences until a person is completely calm. That's one of the key rules. So we have to teach our autistic child about their brain and how being in front brain means they're calm, they can think clearly, they can remember things, they can talk clearly, but when they're in mid brain, they can't as well and when they're in back brain, brain they almost can't at all. We teach them about their brain, how we need to get to front brain so we have a plan for calmness for them every time. If you have a calm plan for your child and you proactively practice it ahead of time and correct it when it's not used, then your child will actually be able to rein themselves in and control themselves a little bit better. It takes a lot of practice to go from having a habit of hitting to get attention or to get your way or to have control to not and communicating in a way that's more effective. What is that way that actually we're gonna be pointing the child toward that's more effective? It's the skill disagreeing appropriately. The more we can use that skill with our children, the more effective they will be at solving their problems and the less likely that they will need to go to aggressive physical communication that is in the end not going to be a good pathway for them for their lives. There are so many things that I could teach you about self-government. If you've got an autistic child and you are wanting to learn all of these skills, I would absolutely love to help you. I help people with neurodiverse children all of the time. I went to a family who has children who are um, autistic, ADHD, ODD, RAD, and we filmed it and we filmed them learning the skills and principles of self-government. It's coming out really soon, so you'll be able to see this family who is neurodiverse, learning the skills, what it looks like, what to teach your children. There's also the TSG parenting course. There's parenting mastery trainings, which are some of the very best trainings, which are online live or sometimes in-person live if you wanna to come to them in person. So see what you can, find to help you. Go to teachingselfgovernment.com. Definitely get the full training. Find yourself on that support group asking questions so that I can help you navigate some of this hard stuff. It doesn't have to be so painful. You can have the relationships that you hope for. They can have the freedom that comes from not having to go to back brain all the time. It's possible. So go to teachingselfgovernment.com today. I'll see you there.